Do you want to know how to boost your authority on Google? Find out today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you found the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 171, and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jenna Bryan, yeah, I know we've been doing and talking and doing a lot of research on online presence, and in particular, uh, Google and LinkedIn, and I'm looking forward to hearing how we can gain authority. I love that word. Gain authority. You have authority, and you can on Google, and I'm telling you, I am... Uh, do it in both areas here so I want to be able to show you a little bit what I've already accomplished but I've learned a few things about Google and I really feel like Google has well first of all Google's always been the one to be on right but the feeling I'm getting is Google is gaining ground on things like Yelp is when it comes to review sites I think more people are leaning towards checking it out on Google versus Yelp. That's the, the people I'm, I hang around that are big into reviews are all like, yeah, Yelp's out, Google's in. Well, that's <laughs> interesting. And I frankly love it because I think, you know, we're Google fans, we use all the Google products and they're the big behemoth out there. And so today I'm gonna talk about four things you can do that uh, to really get some local authority basically, okay? And the, and the first two are, the three of them are free. One of them is an upgrade to pay if you want to do it. So let's ju- let's dive in and talk about it, right? Let's do it. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, tune in, and you can watch us on YouTube. So if you haven't already done so, the very first thing you must, must, must do as a business owner is have a Google My Business profile. Now this thing has been called Google Places, Google Maps, but that's really what it is. So when you know when you put something in Google, like a business you're trying to find, and it shows up in the sidebar or the maps come up and it has a little pin in the map, that's your Google Your Business profile. Super easy to do. You can do it in 10 or 15 minutes. Let me walk you through what the steps are if you have not done this. And frankly, if you think you might have done this in the past, and I bet you need to update it or work on it, right? So they've added so much to it. So you need to go back and revisit it. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's more to it now. It has a, frankly, I'm going to go through the steps and then I'm going to, for those of you that watching via video, or if you're listening to the podcast, go over to the show notes, go to the YouTube and you can kind of get a little, you'll get a little demo of uh, some things I'm going to talk about as far as how the how the dashboard has changed and how it's easier to find your review link and a few things like that. But here's the thing. Make sure you have to have a Google account, obviously. Okay, everything is tied to, and here's the thing. I have like, I don't know, six Google accounts. Yeah. Matt and I share a Google email. When I think about just Gmails, it's ridiculous how many I have. And so I have an old Gmail that for my team in Vegas where Cosmo and I use it to just have junk email go to so that, you know, marketing things that we're getting. So there's two that, you know, that we're hardly using. And then I have another four for different things. And it's, it's all good in the big picture because it, I have it all coming into my phone and I can sort through, I can see all my mail or I can just go to the mail that I want. But Google and Gmail is just one thing, right? There are so many other apps that go with your Google account obviously youtube is one of them uh the google drive stuff which we're fans of but the point i want to make here is if you have like me multiple gmails make sure when you go to do your google your business you're you're using the email that you want to use for your business okay because it'll tie into something else that i'm going to talk to you about today so so if you're not a gmail user then you'll need to create a google account which gives you a gmail and uh, there you go. All right. Now, if you if the first thing you're going to do is go to honestly, it's google.com forward slash business, and a little thing's going to pop up, and it's going to say, "Hey, let's go. Let's go see if you're on here." 
it first checks to see if you've already done it. So you enter your business name. And for real estate agents, I recommend that you put your name in first. Don't put your company name in. The company needs to use, you know, Fidacity Realty is our company. They have a Google profile, but I can be Jan O'Brien, Fidacity Realty Nevada, as an example. But remember, why you want to do this is your Google profile will come up in a Google a search for your name, right? Just like we talked about LinkedIn and Zillow and Realtor.com and all those profiles. You want to be found and especially found with this Google with reviews and so forth. So use your name and then your company name or your team name. Okay. So all you do is go through there and it's super easy. Within 10 minutes, it's going to walk you through what's your cert, you know, what's your area, industry. There's drop downs. It's very self explanatory. You are going to uh, choose a category, select your service areas. This is all important because this is about being local, you know, being this local authority. You can put your physical address in. The physical address needs to be where your license hangs. And there's a few other things that you can do. And then you basically have to go through a verification process. So this whole thing takes 10 or 15 minutes. And then it's going to say, we need to verify you're a real business. So one of two things can happen. If the phone number you entered has been a phone number that Google can see is connected to your business somehow. So obviously do not use an office phone number. This needs to be your right. mobile phone. Uh, I had a problem with this, you know, cause you might change companies. And then I had an old Google, my business. I had to, I had to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. Google was great at fixing it for me, but I had to go through all these hoops to get it to, to change my number because basically I was sending uh, results. People were finding me and then calling my old company, <laughs> my actually two old companies ago. That is not what you want to do. So you may get it to be able to do a text verification if you've got an established business number, even if it's your mobile number that's been established by them and they know it. I've known a few people who've done that. Most of the time, however, you must do a postcard by mail. You're going to just say, hey, send this verification postcard. It goes to your business address. It takes five to seven days. I'm still waiting on my one for Florida. So it could take a little longer. And then you need the code that comes on that to go back to your profile to then let it go live. If you don't do this, then nobody ever sees your profile but you. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. It's easy. The other things that you can do that are really cool on Google, uh, your business now is adding. You always could do this, but there's there's some power in doing it, I think, because it's just showing up even more so. And, and uh, it's adding um, news. And so you can add a couple things. One, you can add offers. So if you have any kind of special deal you're doing, you can put in events like an open house. Um, I sometimes, if I have a really good blog post that I've done, I will just go in. It's like news. You can post something and you can, I can take an excerpt from my post or if I did a video and I can give it the title and then it will just make your profile look good. It looks like you're posting information. So think of it as like a mini blog, right? You products, you can add products. So if you were at the storefront and selling things, you could do that. But as a realtor, we can, our listings are products. So if you have a new listing, you could post that. Maybe you have the virtual tour. You drive all those people back to your other website. And then uh, you can add things like schedule an appointment. So if you're using a software like Calendly, you can have a book an appointment. It makes it easy for people to reach out to you. So make sure you're adding photos. There's opportunities to add photos of your building that your office is in exterior, maybe photos of around the area that you serve, any of your branding sort of photos. It's all very organized, super easy to use. That's number one. Now, number two is just as important as number one, and that's to get client reviews. You've got to get reviews, okay? It, the worst thing that could happen is, which is what's happening for me right now, and I'm about to go do a whole Hey, can you give me a review? Uh, uh, go through this process and then explain to you is that you um, I'm gonna give you a couple ideas on this too. A little bit different than on Google is that I think you could number one, reach out to people who you've worked with that maybe you never really consummated a transaction with. Maybe you help people or you have folks that uh, can vouch for your expertise in the real estate business, right? Uh, they've worked with you. Even even getting a review from a, a fellow agent or a vendor sponsor or somebody else that works with you to vouch for your for who you are. Now, obviously, people read reviews and they make decisions. So you the, the lion's share of what you want to put on here are 
client saying you're awesome, you know, working with you as a buyer or seller. You need those in there. So a couple ideas. We've gone through reviews before, but the easiest way to do this is if you already have reviews and you never put them on Google. So let's say you have some Zillow reviews or you have even LinkedIn or Realtor.com or Facebook or wherever people have given you a review or maybe they've given you a, a feedback and you put it on your website. So this is the easiest way to get some up right away. Go copy those reviews from wherever they gave them to you if they're obviously not already on your Google page. And uh, so if Matt had given me a review, I would call him or text him and say, hey, Matt, I'm really working on my new Google, my business profile. I hadn't really done this in the past and it's 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 uh, becoming you know more important as, as a as a place online um, could you do me a huge favor i'm going to email you the review you gave me last year on zillow would you be so kind as to just log into your google account because i know you use gmail now obviously the people have to have a gmail or a google account otherwise it's going to make them create one so you might just want to do this with people who you know use google and and that's a lot of people a lot of people have gmail but not everybody right and then see if they'll just do that for you. You can't cut and paste and put it yourself. The person has to log into their account and do it, all right, just like the others. So that's the easy way to do it. Or just simply send something out, call people ahead of time, text them, and just say, hey, I have, uh, I don't know how I missed doing this in the past. Whatever you got to say. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Can you do me a huge favor? Even if they were just to give you five stars and not even write a review, it helps, okay? Because it'll say, this many reviews, you know, this person has 20 reviews, 25 star reviews. So uh, just go do that. All right. Now you need number one and number two to do number three, my number three idea for authority. Um, and what's so important about this is this is all about this hyper local people finding you. Okay. When they type in things like real estate agent in the area that they're looking for, and this next one, you can really be prominently displayed and it's called Google service ads. Now this is one you have to pay for. You don't even, you can't even go down this path unless you have a profile and you have reviews. It's just not worth it, right? You'll waste money because if you don't have any reviews, people are probably not gonna work with you. Okay? Nothing to look for, right. You'll be like, you'll be up against all these other agents that are also doing this technique and you've got zero reviews. So you're helping the other people get reviews. And you don't need hundreds of reviews. See if you can get 10, 20 reviews and some good commentary from people talking about what it is that you do to help people uniquely. That's, that's, that's the key, right? And all you have to do is, uh, I've got links in the show notes for you. You just go to it's ads.google.com, it's local service ads, and you start a process. Now, they are going to verify you, they being Google. They go through a screening and a license and insurance process. They say they do a background check. I don't even really know what that means, hmm. how, how deep they go. But they are, so what happens now is if you, if you went and did a search to, in fact, I'm going to demonstrate this really quick, okay? So um, let me, I'm going to describe what I'm doing. And so if you're listening, you can, um, you know, just know that it, it'll be easy to go check this out on your, on your own later. Um, so let me see, what do I want to share? I want to share my, there it is, okay. So I'm going to come back to this in a second. This is my Google. I'm actually looking at my Google, my business uh, site. It's sharing okay. All right, so I'm just on Google, and I'm going to type in, uh, this is where I live, Wesley. This is what people are doing, right? If they are going to move to Wesley Chapel, Florida, and uh, real estate agents. Okay, they could also say who best, looking for reviews. So what just popped up is Google service ads. So all I typed in is what the average person that might be moving to your city is going to do if they're looking. Now, first they start looking for houses, I think, and then they might find people that way. But people absolutely type in Wesley Chapel real estate agents or the best real estate agents or reviews. All I did was just put Wesley Chapel real estate agents. But if I put, even if I did reviews, let me just see. I'm still going to get this Google screen thing. Absolutely. Okay, so now I get Yelp and Zillow, but above here are agents popping out, three people. Uh, holy mackerel, let's go right here, 850 yeah, look at that. reviews. That's Do you think wild. she's probably getting some business off of this? I would say yes. Then it goes down to 15 and then 12, and it's without even leaving the first page of Google, we can get a little information, we can get a phone number, we can call, but if we go to more, 
we'll get the whole list of everybody that's in this area right now. But what's interesting, you see this, the girl that had uh, that many, 851, she's, she's, she actually lives in, she's, she chose Land O'Lakes. This is really important in my opinion. And the rest of them are Tampa, right? So if somebody really wanted to be known for Wesley Chapel, I'm, I'm scrolling. I'm St. Pete, Tampa. I'm not seeing Wesley Chapel yet. So if I was looking for somebody who really focused on Wesley Chapel, I, uh, I would probably choose that person. Okay. Or I might read the reviews, but there's a whole bunch of people on here and um, the average people only have, here's a person with 409 to 20 reviews. What you say, Matt, I'm looking at it. Yep. It's all 20, low. There's a few, three, here's somebody with three reviews. Far more and lower than higher. That's for sure. That 851 is the, uh, not the common. Okay, so the cost for these Google service ads, there's one of two ways to do it. Once they approve and verify you, you're able to uh, choose whether you want a monthly budget. Like I only want to spend 300 bucks a month and that's going to, you know, obviously the more you spend, the more leads you get. Or you only uh, pay per lead and you can say, I only want to spend $10 a lead or $20 a lead. So that's what I was able to find out about it from people I know that are doing it. I will say of the folks and clients that I have using this, depending on where they are in the world, in the country, they're getting some good leads from this because it really is front and center on, on, the, on the front page of Google. So if you're looking for, I feel a very good way, not everybody and their brother knows about this, but clearly it's starting to catch on. It's been around for a year plus, almost two years. Uh, it's not 100% sat saturated. There's an opportunity probably in certain areas, wherever you are. If you don't have a lot of people doing it, you have a huge opportunity to get in if there's not a lot of competition, okay? Have you talked to somebody that actually has had success with it? Yeah, one of our clients that's in Peoria, uh, Jessica. We should have her come on and talk about that. We yeah. should do an interview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, and then I know a few other, I, ha I just anecdotally know of a few other people I haven't talked to them specifically about their results, but she shared it. So cool. that one I think is really a cool idea. And then the last idea here is to do something else I'm testing, which is it's, it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's still tied to the whole Google thing. So using your Gmail that you have that for your Google, your profile, you can start uh, and, and use the Google Maps app, not the app that came with your phone. OK, so the key to this whole thing of and I had to switch this because I am a user of the iOS uh, app uh, for Maps. Mm -hmm. Yep. When I'm using it for GPS and so forth, but I, had, I switched to the Google Maps for this very reason. I start. I went through this process of just signing up to be a local guide. Okay, Matt, you might really like this idea. Uh, you know, when you're out and about wandering and eating places, or even going to national parks or anywhere, you, you basically turn on your location services and you sort of sign up, and you and they have a whole reward system where mm -hmm. you start you get prompted to leave a review for every place you go. So if you use this map app to say, let me go find the such and such restaurant and you have it all turned on, it, it'll keep prompting you to say, how was your visit to the whatever, you know, auto store or this trail that you went to or that restaurant that you visited. And you start getting rewards and stars. If you give reviews, it's not just reviews. If you give reviews, the longer your reviews, more than just starring it and then adding photos and commentary. And you basically become a voice for the community, right? And so the uh, business connection idea here is if you're really wanting to be a local business expert, a local, you know, the agent of choice, if you will, this, this whole Google thing is one of the strategies that I'm really working on and, and sharing with people is that this is an idea. You just start moving up. I'm like at a level three or four right now, just because of the reviews I've given. And, and photos. It's all about photos, right? Everybody wants the photos sure. and they want that. And they want you to verify, is this the right address? And so there's like a network of guides all, of, all around the world and the country and they have support. For that. You get some perks. If you keep doing it, there used to be some pretty decent perks, like getting some free drive space. Now the perks are more like uh, oh. a Google Play, getting some uh, credits in the Google store and things like that. But there are actually some little bitty perks, but the bigger business connection idea that I think is cool is the ability to 
go and meet businesses, right? You're going to go write a review of a business and then you're going to promote them and put them on your blog. And you're going to bring this goodwill of, of meeting local business owners and promoting them. And then you, over time, you just keep up, you can become this local guide and making this connection, which can lead to more business for you as well. Right. Or maybe asking them to do the same for you, giving you a review back. So I love this idea. Uh, it's gotten me to speak to a couple of the owners when I've been doing the reviews and and then seeing if I can start build. I'm in a new community, so I'm trying to build goodwill and learn about the community, become that local expert that knows about cool things to go do in the area and places to eat and businesses to frequent. And then you just get in the habit of, taking a couple photos and posting it and writing a quick review. And uh, then you can interact with other people who are guides. So it's another way to meet people and, yeah. and, and learn things and do things and, and become more of that local authority. So then what's cool is if, if you've got like, you know, it's just like on Yelp, if you've got like a hundred reviews, people can come look at your profile, which is tied to your real estate, which can, you know, somebody could reach out to you. All right. So that's the, that's the four ideas about how to be, uh, you know, leverage Google to, to, to boost your local authority. And it's not that big of a deal. The whole Google my business set it up, you do it, then you just have to get reviews. Maybe add some photos and, and uh, links and articles every now and again. Uh, that's it, you know, and then if you're gonna run an ad, you're running an ad, it's working for you. And this last one is just basically, you're just in the habit of, frankly, if you turn everything on, Google will be like, uh, would you like to review that place? You don't have yeah. to remember, it just prompts you. And what about this place? And then it's the whole reward thing, which is so it's that gamification that everybody is so addicted to. Right. So it'll be like, good job, Jan. You just earned 15 stars. You're only five stars away from going to the next level. And it encourages you to keep doing it. It's brilliant. It works. It works. It, it does work. It works, right. It works when you have a game. You're almost sure. to the next level. Right. It so, works with your rings on your iPhone, your uh, uh, Apple watch. Whatever. They got us figured out as human beings. But the right. um, long and short of it is leverage the power of Google. Go do it today. If you're not on Google My Business, make that happen today. And that's you know, all it's I interesting, Jim. We've been talking a lot about things like uh, LinkedIn, your LinkedIn all-star profile, uh, the Google My Business page. These are things that you need to do, whether you're going to really go maximum on these platforms or not. People are on these two platforms. Everyone is, right? So you, you don't don't start out being the Instagrammer because you know that's going to take you a long time to get that going to be an influencer. But these other places are places where people are going to find you today. So it's important to get this part of your business up and running. Awesome. So what else is going on, Jan Brian? I'm I'm excited. I'll be down there in your neck of the woods and just well, a little I know. I'm looking forward to showing you around my neighborhood. I know. I'm looking forward to <laughs> to seeing Wesley Chapel and uh meeting your sister for crying out loud. I was talking to my sweet pea yesterday and she's like, Oh, you, you I was talking about uh, your sister and she's like, You haven't met her? I'm like, No, I know, Matt, uh, it so feels like, like I have. She said the same thing. She's like, Haven't we met? And I'm like, no, you only met like on video. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, time. So, that's fine. You both feel like you know each other. So yeah, yeah that'd be fun. We'll do a little Florida wandering and uh, be able to report back and uh, chat about that. The, that And maybe do a live, maybe we could do a live. You know what, Matt, we should do a live or, uh, you know, recording of wherever we go visit. I'll take yeah, you to that's a good idea. Or uh, show you a couple of neat places that are around Love here. Love that yeah. idea. We uh, we're getting closer. If you listen to our podcast last week, we talked about our new uh, real estate course that's coming out, Real Estate Sales Builder. We have been putting the finishing touches on that, and that's getting ready to launch sometime within the next couple of weeks as well. Wouldn't you say, Jenna Brown? We don't have a definite date yet, but we probably will by next week. Yes. Um, so if you uh, did not listen to our podcast last week or you missed that part of it, uh, well, actually, it was all about that. So you couldn't have missed it if you uh, listened to the podcast. But go back and listen to episode 170. You know, learn more about our incredible real estate sales builder course, which is crazy. And I right, me to ask you, what's happening with the June SOI challenge? Uh, it's for, for me, I'm actually doing pretty good with that. Really? I have two of my Give clients uh, doing, uh, well, frankly, they're doing better than I am. I was working more on my real estate stuff, but I have made massive progress this week, frankly, because I did, you know, have an accountability to buddies. So I have to I have to report tomorrow and I have, um, I have progress to report some good stuff. I'm not where I need to be, but it's not the end of June yet either. No, absolutely not. So it turned into more than the SOI. It's turned into, you know, what are the other projects? What are your goals? Making connections. Part of it for both of my clients with reaching out to their sphere. And they've done that. 
um, but they've also worked on other things that they were going to do. So good stuff. As things always happen, they, there is scope creep in anything that we do, mm -hmm. right? All right. Hey, if you haven't been over to our Facebook page, we do have a, a private Facebook group. You can go over there and join us over on Facebook. Ah, just go to Facebook and type in the WBNL Wanderers Club and join. We have tips and tricks along the way, as well as a place where we always load up our podcast every week as well. So anything else, Jan O'Brien? That's it for this week. All right, everyone. Get up, get out, be safe out there, and be forever wandering, but not lost. Thank you.